a family cocktail and an American adventure. Just some of the prizes on offer in this week's edition of 3 to 1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Rogers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody in the studio, all of you folks at home. Welcome, as always, to 321, the big one. The quiz, the game, and big variety. You know, it's strange the effect this has on people. Last week, I bumped into Lionel Blair. It took him three minutes to discover whether it was a book, a play, or a film. <laughs> <laughs> but we have got a great bell tonight. People who really do use their fingers. Georgie Fame is with us tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, a great fellow who's known as looking after the wild bunch in the trade, uses his hands, the great Don Lusher Big Band's here. Good, eh? Marvellous. And there's one character that we're hoping that our contestants don't finger tonight, and you know who that is. That's our resident booby prize, Dusty Bin, who's over there with the people. Remember, if they didn't show, we wouldn't have a show. Say hello to our contestants. <laughs> Of course, there he is. As always, at this time of the week, Dusty Bin hanging around here. Remember, if he's won at the end of our program, all our contestants take home, of course, is a brand new dustbin. That's all they get. So, Dusty, off you go. Let's find out who the folks are from Linda Lee Lewis. Linda. Hello. Are you love? Okay. Yes, indeed. Superb as always, isn't it? Lovely. Who are the folks tonight? Right, we have Jeff and Wendy Saxon from Howarth in West Yorkshire. Uh -huh. Alan. Uh -huh. We have Alan and Jenny Bowman from Seaford in East Sussex. Yes. And Martin and Glenise Appel from Newport in the Isle of Wight. Yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Good. Yeah, Martin and Glenise, Newport, Isle of Wight. I know that well. I often work over there on concerts and things. I always go over there on the Hoovercraft. <laughs> now, they call it the Hoovercraft because halfway across you have to stop and empty the bag. <laughs> what, what do you do over there, Martin? Funny enough, I work for the, the company that actually makes the hovercraft. Oh, do you? Um, Western Aerospace on the Isle of Wight. Really? What about hobbies? What do you have? Um, do it yourself. Oh, yeah. And are you good at it? Glenny sort of looked at it. No, he's not Glenny. <laughs> not very good? No, I no. thought I was. Does disaster follow him around then or what? All the time. Yeah. yeah? What's even, this? Well, even on honeymoon, um, we had. <laughs> yeah, <the> disaster <laughs> on honeymoon? <laughs> Shouldn't happen. <laughs> we had the one room that had water, so all the other well, honeymooners all used our room for showers and. Well, we're where, the only where was this? Benidorm. Oh, well, that's it. So there's a lot of people. That's what Benidorm is. A lot of people share a dorm, don't they? <laughs> Always happens in Spain. Anyway, nice that you're here. Good luck. We've got Alan and Jenny from Seaford. Yes. That's correct. Right. Seaford in Sussex, which I know also well. What do you do then, Alan? What's your job? I sell money for a living. Oh, so you're a forger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? I work for a company that uh, is in the leasing business, does uh -huh. leasing and contract hire of cars and equipment. Mm. And Jenny, what do you do? I'm a primary school teacher at Cradle Hill School in Seaford. Really? Yes, I've got a class of four and five-year-olds, uh -huh. which is great fun. And I also own a, a shop in the town where we sell children's clothes. Yes. It's, uh, like, they always have mother care. They never have anything for father care, you know. <laughs> anyway, Jeff and Wendy Saxon from Howarth, West Yorkshire. Yes, Saxon, yes. that's a good old English name, Jeff. Please. It is, yeah. And, and what do you do? What do you do for a living? I'm a chef. I'm a chef at the Ringer Bells in Thornton, uh -huh. Bradford. Um, what do you think of this fast food, Jeff? It's big business today, fast food. It's the up-and-coming thing in the industry, but I'm not that keen on it. No, you know why they call it fast food. It's never with you long enough. <laughs> <laughs> and Wendy, are you in catering as well? Well, I do part-time merchandising for um, a company for, with biscuits and sweets and things like uh -huh. that. Oh, oh, I see. Confectionery. Yeah. yeah. You, I've never. I've always wanted to complain. I complained a couple of months ago to one of those chocolate companies. And they said it's not our fault. It's the cost of jumping out the helicopter, swimming in the river, and climbing all those <laughs> cliffs. <laughs> anyway, folks, it's good that you're all here. Good time. We do want you to have a good time. And as you know, in our quiz, we always give you ten pounds to start with. All right. Now you get ten pounds for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever you win at the end of the first round is what you get for each correct answer in the second round. General knowledge questions on the buzzer. When you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer. Please wait until I say your name and answer. If you're wrong, I shall say on offer and the other, other couples have a chance to go for the question. Again, hit the buzzer, wait until I say your name. If they're wrong, that question will go in the bin. We want ten correct answers in the first round and you can put your hands by the buzzer, but don't hover them, <laughs> okay, over there. Good luck to you. And here's the very first question. Where does the FA Cup final take place? Alan and Jenny. Wembley. Wembley Stadium is right. Which of the Queen's children married in 1973? That's Jeff and Wendy. Philip. 
It's wrong. So it's on offer and Alan and Jenny. Princess Anne. Princess Anne, the Princess Royal is right, yes. Next question. In connection with telephoning, what do the letters STD stand for, Martin and Glenise? Subscriber trunk dialing. That's right, subscriber trunk dialing, unless, of course, you're going through the operator, then STD stands for sometimes takes days. <laughs> In mathematics, what is the square root of 100? Martin and Glenise? 10. That's right, just came, didn't it? Yes, yeah, 10 times good. Next question is, name the winner of this year's British Grand Prix. That's Alan and Jenny. Nigel Mansell. Nigel Mansell. Yes, right. You know the difference between Nigel Mansell and Arthur Scargill? Scargill makes more pit stops. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of furniture comes in types called Wing, Arm and Windsor? Alan and Jenny? Chair. Chair is right. Which actor played the character who courted Olivia Newton-John in the film Grease? Alan and Jenny? John Travolta. John Travolta. In which of Charles Dickens' books does the, the Scrooge appear? That's Martin and Glenys. A Christmas Carol. Uh, that is absolutely right. Next question. What creature produces natural silk? Martin and Glenys. Silkworm. That's right, the silkworm. Simple as that, yes. <laughs> Next question. Name the Australian tennis player who knocked Boris Becker out. Ah, that you've anticipated Jeff and Wendy. Cash. That's wrong. I'll continue with the question, and then the other two couples have a chance to go with it. Name the Australian tennis player who knocked Boris Becker out of the Wimbledon men's singles this year. Alan and Jenny? Doolin. That's right, Peter Doolin, the Australian, and that, of course, is our tenth question. And at the end of our first round, we've got Jeff and Wendy on £10. Martin and Glenys have 50 but in the lead at the moment, we've got Alan and Jenny, £70 they've got. OK, so that's the end of the first round. Sit there and relax for the moment because we have our newcomer spot, 2-3-2-1. And this week, it's the turn of two guys who were newcomers to all of us until a few months ago. They scored such a success with all their comedy songs on Bob Says Opportunity Knocks. Here tonight with a number from their first album, please welcome Rossa and Davis. <laughs> Gather a rope. I've a story to tell about this year cowboy. He came straight out of hell. They called him Mean Dan. And he lived way out west. Uh, Cause that being mean. Well, old Dan was the best. You're left. Not yet, not yet. He had no relations Or so it was said And the ones that he'd had Yes, he'd shot them all dead He stood seven feet tall He was never off guard And he cut off his nose Said it, it made, made him look hard Mean Dan, mean Dan One hell of a man The devil himself was his number one fan With a chest like a barrel And a head like a can Sing yodel, 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 lady <laughs> now Dan had this horse That he'd found in a ditch And being mean Dan Called a son of a gun They rode near and far Double-crossing his friends And boiling eggs While still in the hens <laughs> That's low, that that's is mean, mean, that's mean now Dan liked to gamble. Interest was sustained. When he had five aces, <laughs> nobody complained. Except for one man. In a protest he led. Dan smiled at him nicely. <laughs> Then blew off his head to me, Dan, me, Dan, what hell of a man. The devil himself was his number one fan, with a chest like a barrel and a head like a can. Sing your little old lady, a young lady. There was a price on the head Of this evil cutthroat. He was wanted for murder and attacking a goat. Well, the goat had a son. Called him William, he did. He became better known as... Billy No, no, <laughs> William the goat. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dan, he got murdered. Aww. Thanks. The killer left no ifs and no buts. 
He was shot 16 times, stabbed and kicked in the, the guts. <laughs> well, we know where he's gone. <laughs> we know he is doing fine. A a giving the devil one hell of the time. Me done. Rossa and Davis. Very, very fine act, they really are. Good luck to you guys. Okay, folks, here we are at round two of the quiz. Look at the hands going back. They can't <laughs> wait. Jeff and Wendy go for £10 for each correct answer. And Martin and Glennie get 50. Alan and Jenny, you get £70 for each correct answer this, this time. You know, we have to say goodbye to the couple with the lowest amount of money at the end of the quiz. But, of course, this time the difference is there are 15 questions. Good luck to you. Here we go. First one is what kind of horses can enter the thousand guineas? Alan and Jenny? Phillies. Phillies is absolutely correct. In which country are the Adriatic resorts of Split and Dubrovnik? That's Alan and Jenny. Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is right. If a stalactite hangs from the roof of a cave, anticipated Alan and Jenny. What am I going to say? Stalagmite. Stalagmite. That was what I was going to say. What goes the other way from the floor beneath? What is the sailor's term for the right-hand side of the ship, Martin and Glenys? Starboard. Starboard is right. Who writes each week the TV Times on your star signs? Martin and Glenys? Claire Rayner. No, that's wrong. So it's on offer. Alan and Jenny? Oh, God. Patrick Walker. Uh, that's also wrong. It's got to go in the bin. That, of course, was Russell Grant. Yes. Next question. What flower produces the clock that children blow? You've anticipated Martin and Glenys? Dandelion. Dandelion is right. Yes, to tell the time. That's right. Dandelion. Next one is, how many buns are there in a baker's dozen? That's Alan and Jenny. Thirteen. Thirteen is right. What is the name of Gaston LaRue's story about a haunted opera house now turned anticipated Martin and Glenys? Phantom of the Rue Morgue. That's wrong. So it's on offer. Alan and Jenny. Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the yeah. Opera. The musical by Lloyd Webber is right, yes. According to the rhyme, Monday's child is fair of face. What is Tuesday's child, Martin and Glenys? Full of grace. Full of grace is right. I'm a Friday night child myself. I was manufactured in the back of a mini on the British Leyland night shift. <laughs> in slang terms, how much money is a pony? Martin and Glenys. 25 pounds. 25 pounds. That was like lightning there, yes. Next question. Who sang Dancing in the Streets with Mick Jagger? <laughs> Jeff and Wendy. David Bowie. David Bowie is right. What is the name of the chalky headland just south of Eastbourne in Sussex? Martin and Glenys. Beachy Head. Beachy Head is right. Next question. What county does a tyke come from? Martin and Glenys. Yorkshire. Yorkshire is right. Yeah, Beecher, Jeff and Wendy there. Thought they'd have got that. <laughs> tyke, of course, comes from Yorkshire. I won't tell you what I'm called, but I come from Berkshire. <laughs> <laughs> Which American singing group of the early 60s consisted of Brian, Dennis and Carl Wilson, Mike Love, anticipated Alan and Jenny? Beach Boys. The Beach Boys, yes, and Al Jardine, the great Beach Boys. Here's the 15th question. What is the name of the sauce served with spaghetti in which the main ingredients and you've anticipa anticipated Bolognese. Alan... Bolognese, yes. The uh, main ingredients are onion, minced beef and tomatoes, Bolognese sauce. So, therefore, at the end of our quiz this week, we have Jeff and Wendy on £20. We've got Martin and Glenys on £350, but the winners are Alan and Jenny, £560 they've got. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, Jeff and Wendy, I tell you what, you know, I, well, you haven't come far to go home with that, have you? But uh, you know how much he's worth, quite a bit of money. But I'll tell you one thing, standing there at the lectern delivering these questions this week, it was like lightning. I mean, you just couldn't get in here, could you? It's bash, bash, bash. <laughs> Been great contestants, though, haven't they, folks? Great. Well done, Jeff. It's disappointing. <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of minutes on 3, 2, 1. Don't go far. <laughs> Show where we have Alan and Jenny, who are from Seaford in Sussex, playing against Martin and Glenys, who are from the Isle of Wight. Now, you know what happens, folks, here. We're about to show you three acts. At the end of each one of them, one of our guests is going to come here to the table, leave you a clue object, and read a rhyme. When we have three here on the table, you've got to choose one to reject if you are the lucky couple who gets through our elimination question. 
Good luck to you. On with act number one. And with a great tribute to the marvellous Stan Kenton Band, here with Peanut Vendor, the Don Lusher Big Band. and you again like that and as I said that's that's from an album you did isn't yes it? it's an album we did a few months ago and it sold very well so we're going to go into the studio shortly and do a follow-up smash into here the you and the guys Thank what's you. gonna be the clue for the people here it's a racehorse all right racehorse is. is the clue for you this time and the rhyme says what for five centuries past or a little more you'll find service with a smile in store they are that's the very first one tonight we're gonna to see them a bit later on but ladies and gentlemen for the time being Don Lusher thank, thank you Don you very much, sir. Well done. Thank you very much. All right. well, this is rather good here. Quite a bit of a buzz going on. Could well be the uh, Could be what, Spanish Alan? horse race thing that they have. Uh, the Spanish horse race thing? What about you, Martin? You thought about it? Could be China. No. 
Could be China. Hmm? Could be anything <laughs> here, <laughs> believe me. China. As I say, that's the first one. Just keep thinking about it, and believe me, thinking about Dusty Bin, whoever gets through the question, that's what you've got to think about. When he's out the way, you know you get a good prize. Let's have act number two, and I'm delighted to introduce this lady. She's been on what, many, many big hit records. She's one of the busiest singers in the business. Tonight she's doing for us Do It Good, and you know it's going to be good when it's Madeline Bell. And every one of y'all, big daddies as well. Just think of all the silly things you've done to us, yeah. Then you spread it around to all of your pals. You know I don't want to wreck your ego. But from now on, I'm telling you I'm ego. You've got to love us like you should. Every night, why don't you do it right? Love is like you should, but do it good so we won't talk about you when you're gone. Come on, no, you guys, why don't you give us a break? Now, don't do all the taking for heaven's sake we know what you're thinking. If you don't like my peaches, don't shake my tree. You know I don't want to wreck your ego. But from now on, I'm telling you I'm ego. You've got to love us like you should, but do it good. Each and every night, why don't you do it right? That's, that's a special number to you, isn't it? That do it good. Yes, it was written by a friend of mine named Kay Garner. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Great number, that good. We hear you all the time. Busy lady all around the world. What are you leaving these folks here as a clue? A pair the... of ice tongs. Ice tongs. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the clue for you this time. And the rhyme says what? Choose this, and like the EEC, you'll finish with a tiny C. All right, that's the second one on the table tonight. We're going to thank Madeline Bell. Madeline. Mm. <laughs> good luck, darling. Take care, love. Nice to see you. A, li a little quiet this time. What do you say, Alan, to that one? Tiny Nothing sea, at all? Uh, How about Martin? Tiny sea. Yeah? Mediterranean Sea? Yeah, that's good, yeah. European. Keep thinking about it. Let's have <laughs> item number three. And again, it's great to have great friends back on the show. Here we're in the Miller Mood once again with Chattanooga Choo Choo. Who else but Stutz Bearcats? <laughs> Yes, sir. Track 29. Boy, you can give me a shine. I can afford you for a chat new choo-choo. I got my best. A 
just a trouble to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. Read a magazine and then you rip on a ball. Dinner in the diner, nothing good but butter. Then to have you have a missing Carolina. When you hear the whistle blowing into the bar, then you know the Tennessee's not very far. Shovel all the coal and gotta keep on rolling. Ooh, Chattanooga, there you are. Good to see you, love. As always, I know you're, you're a busy crowd. I did say right. that was the Chattanooga Choo Choo, but mm -hmm. that's also off a new album too, isn't it? That's right. It's going to be released uh, pretty soon. It's going to be in that? the shops. Good, yeah. good. Good to see you all again. And again, I know you're all around the world working. Thanks very much for dropping in here to 321. What are you leaving them as the clue? A chess piece. A and chess it's piece? The Queen. OK, that's the clue this time. And here's the third rhyme. Let's hear this one. If you join this Queen, it will take you days before you both reach the final phase. Well, that's the final one on the table for the moment. Linda of Stutz Bear Cats. Thank you. Well done, Linda. Good luck, love. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It's, it's suddenly become so easy here. What is it, Alan? It, it could be, yes. Yeah, good, could be. Do you reckon it's a bin? Don't really know, do you? No. Well, we've got, the, we've got three on the table. You've just heard that one from Linda. I can read the other two again. Now, the first one was brought in by Don Lusher, the racehorse. He said, for five centuries past or a little more, you'll find service with a smile in store. That was the first one. Item number two was the pair of ice tongs. Came in from Madeline Bell, who said, choose this, and like the EEC, you'll finish with a tiny C. There you are. Go. And that's the three. There could be a couple of cruises in there, couldn't there? There could be anything in there. What do you reckon, Martin? What are you going to get rid of if you get through? Eloise, thought about it? No. How well, about Alan? Oh, great tongs. He's in like a flame. Is that right, Jenny? Is that okay? Well, what about you then, Martin? What do you say? I think we'll get rid of the racehorse. Really? Yeah. How okay with you, Eloise? Yes. Sure. Positive. OK, we've established that. You get rid of the ice tongs, you get rid of the racehorse <laughs> if you get through. OK, well, good luck with the elimination question, which I have here. That's it. Put your hands by that buzzer there. <laughs> Not over there, please. I'm going to start to read the question. When you think you know the answer, you hit the button and answer. If you're wrong, the other couple will get a free go. If they're right, of course, they will go through. But good luck. Here's the question. This man's real name is William White. He started his stage career at the age of 14 under the name of Billy Breen. For many years, he was a female impersonator. 
You've gone for it, Martin and Glenys. Who is it? Larry Grayson. Larry Grayson's right. Yes, you've got it. That's right. My next line was going to be is a friend to many sweethearts, and of course we were going to get to the generation game. I'm sure you got that, so you knew that. Not, not many people knew that. <laughs> anyway, that's good. That means you're through, and of course we do have to say goodbye to Alan and Jenny. And then mind Jane from Stats Bear Cats is here with the money that they won in the quiz. And uh, how much was that, Jane? Five hundred and sixty pounds. Five hundred and sixty pounds, folks. Yes, your ceramic dusty bin, and Jenny and Alan. Just take a look across there because Linda has for you this week's consolation prize, which in fact is three books about the big bands and a huge selection of big band albums. How about that? <laughs> then they're a great couple. Give them a round of applause, folks. Well done, Alan. Well done, Jenny. You've rejected the racehorse. It's yes. Right. We yes. hope you think it is what you think it is. We'll be back in a couple of minutes to see exactly what it is. Don't go far. <laughs> And we've got Martin and Glenys, who are from Newport, Isle of Wight, got food to the most important part of the show. And believe me, it is important because you know what you've got to look out for now, that dreaded, dusty bin. Anyway, you've rejected the racehorse, right? right? Have you thought about it in the break, what it could be? We know what you hope it is. It might be dinner service. Yes? Derby Chime. Yes? Oh, yeah, you said that <laughs> earlier on. OK, well, you're going to reject this one anyway. It was brought in, of course, by Don Lusher. Item number one, he brought in the racehorse. He said, for five centuries past or a little more, you'll find service with a smile in store. Is what he said. Now, if I can open it, we'll see what it is for you. For five centuries past or a little more, well, that on its own might not suggest too much, but couple it with the clue object, a racehorse, and you have five centuries past or five hundreds gone by. Concerned with horsepower, that could suggest miles, leading to you'll find service with a smile in store, oh, and no. after five hundred miles, that's what you would have been getting, a service, because it's the car! Oh, no. oh. <laughs> uh. Not exactly dinner service. That was your choice, was it? Mm. Well, you know, you've got another four yet. All you've got to think about, as I say, is that bin. I know you thought that was something else, yeah. but I'm afraid it has been rejected, so take What's it away, that? please. The star prize <laughs> has to go. Uh, you've now got a three-to-one shot, OK? So just keep thinking about it. Take your time. You've got plenty of time now. We all feel sad, but there are <laughs> other great prizes on this show, believe me. OK, we'll have act number four. You know, a while back, a young man had a big hit with a song called The Ballad of Bonnie and Clyde. I'm glad to say he's back with us tonight. Same number with the arrangement done for him by the great Count Basie, Georgie Fame.
was done by the Count Basie man himself. Well, Chico know. O'Farrell, the band's arranged yeah. at the time of all, especially for Basie's band. Yeah. yeah. You, you're such a busy man. I know, you, you know, last time we spoke, you were doing the Hoagie thing. Yeah. And you're doing the Gershwin thing. I'm doing thing. a lot of Gershwin concerts this yeah. year with the Lane Del Mar. Such yeah. a talented man. Really but it's always nice to get the opportunity to sing with a great big band. Oh, I know. Aren't they something else? Yeah. They're really marvellous. But yeah. you know, you're a great guy yourself. And you brought these folks in a clue this time? Yeah, my is clue like... is a packet of grass cuttings. Okay, that's the clue for you this time. And the rhyme, George says what? The rhyme says, when in drive, it makes not a sound and travels two feet off the ground. Okay. That's always a bit of a buzz in the audience there. That's number four. We're going to thank Georgie Fame. George, good luck. Thank yeah. Thanks a lot. Georgie Fame, folks. Yeah. Marvellous. <laughs> well, whatever you think of the audience, they're chatting away back here. What do you oh, think, Lenny? Possibly for Ben. Could be. <laughs> well, that itself's got to be Not good because you've got to think Ben all the time. Could be, could be a motorised lawnmower. <laughs> could be anything, Martin, on this show, believe me. So you've got three on the table again. I can read one of the other two again just to refresh your memory, you know, whatever you choose yeah, to reject. Read, the read this one again? Chess okay, piece. yes. This uh, chess piece came in from Linda of Stutz Bearcat. She said, If you join this queen, it will take you days before you both reach the final phase. So. Three are on the table, you've got to reject yeah. one. What are you going for this time? The ice tongs, the queen, oh, the grass guys. cuttings, what? You can make the decision this time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, oh. they all do this. They all throw it to the other one here. Yeah, the grass cuttings. You're all right on that one, aren't you, folks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, there. Hang on, she's gone back. She's gone back. Are you sure? Am I going to get rid of this one? Yes. Because once I open it, it has to go. Yes. Yes? Go on. Martin, go on. Is it going? Yes. Right, we're rejecting. <laughs> okay. The, Pack of the grass cuttings which came in just now from Georgie Fame. When in drive, it makes not a sound and travels two feet off the ground. What have we done to you this time? When in drive, it makes not a sound. That could start you thinking of something like a car. Well, sometimes we have a couple on this show. Or as the clue is a packet of grass cuttings, maybe a hover mower, as you were thinking about, that leads to and travels two feet off the ground. But of course, grass cuttings are also something you throw away. And the only thing on this show that doesn't make a sound when it's standing on your drive and travels, travels two feet off the ground, Dusty Bing, you done. Yes, there he is. My friend Dusty, there he is again. He's been rejected. Take him away, please. Look, you feel so much better now, don't you? Yeah. Oh, gosh. You see, because really that was your decision, but you, he was hovering. Oh, anyway, yeah. that means at least a good prize goes home with you tonight. I know how you were feeling when the car went, but as I say, we have three great prizes, four great prizes on the show. We have one more act to show you, and once again, we're going back to those guys. This time with the great Harry James classic, Two O'Clock Jump, the Don Lusher Big Band.
pleasure having you in the studio. The folks have loved you. I'm sure everybody at home has. Anyway, what are you leaving this time as the clue? This is a tube of insect repellent. Okay, that's the clue this time. There it is. All right? It. And the rhyme says what? Your own suite of rooms, you can choose just where. Once you've learned the ropes, you'll have space to spare. Okay, that's the last one on the table tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Lusher. Thank, Thank you, Don. You. Thank you. Don Lusher and his big bang. Marvellous. <laughs> now then, Martin, what do you reckon for that? Could be a tent. Could be? A tent. A tent. A tent. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Insect repellent comes very handy. Yeah, it would do. What about you, Glenise? Do you think that as well? Yes, yeah, possibly. It could be. Well, you can hear one or the other two again. Which one can would we you hear like? this one now, please? Do you want to hear the this ice tongs? Yes, Madeline Bell brought in the ice tongs. She said, choose this, and like the EEC, you'll finish with a tiny C. Right. You're in the good position now. You know, obviously, the bin has gone. You've lost the car, but there are three great prizes on the table here, being three, two, one. What do you want to do, Glenise? What one's going to go? You think the insect repellent? You think the insect repellent? <laughs> yes. You just don't like Don Lusher tonight, do you? Whatever it brings in, <laughs> it's going to be rejected, yes? It is. All right, the insect repellent which came in, <laughs> item number five from Don Lusher, your own suite of rooms, you can choose just where. Yeah. Once you've learned the ropes, you'll have space yeah. to spare. Yeah. Yes, oh, you're saying yes now, you've heard it again. Yeah. Your own suite of room, rooms, you can choose just where. It might start you thinking about something like a timeshare apartment, maybe? The clue object was a tube of insect repellent, so it suggests it could be somewhere very hot. Or else it could mean somewhere outdoors where you'd be at the mercy of insects, leading to once you've learned the ropes, you'll have space to spare. The main clue here is learning the ropes. Once you've mastered that, acres of space, you're right, it's a camping <laughs> tent and all this equipment. Have a look. It's the latest thing in outdoor living. It all folds into a trailer, which of course would have been included, as well as two airbeds, two sleeping bags, cutlery and free gas. The great outdoors never used to be like this. Uh, still, never mind. It's a marvellous prize. It's gone. You've rejected it. We're now on to the final two. Being the final two, I can read them both again. Now, the ice tongs came in. Item number two from Madeline Bell. Choose this, and like the EEC, you'll finish with a tiny C. Madeline said that. Okay, the chess piece came in from Linda of Stutz Bearcats. She said, if you join this queen, it will take you days before you reach the final phase. So there you go. One has to go. The one remaining is your prize tonight. What do you want to do? Get rid of, get rid of the tongs. Yes, adamant yes. about that. I don't yes. ask them again. You want to get rid of yes. the tongs? Yes. Okay. Because you, you don't know what you think it is. No. You no, just no, don't no. like the sound of it. Just a grudge. A grudge? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's going to be rejected. Yes. Fine. Pair of ice tongs. Madeline Bell brought you in. Choose this, and like the EEC, you'll finish with a tiny C. That's what Madeline said. Okay. Choose this, and like the EEC, could suggest that it's something to do with Europe but perhaps only by comparison, because the clue object was a pair of ice tongs that could suggest a bar, leading to you'll finish with a tiny C. Well, the EEC's tiny C is, of course, a wine lake, and you'd about had about the equivalent with all of these drinks. Have a look at this! Yes, you would have had enough liquid refreshment to stock your own off-license. There would have been a case of scotch, Irish whiskey, gin, vodka, brandy, Cointreau, port, and a case of champagne. And should none of these have been to your taste, there would have been a case of red and white wines, too. Would have been quite a party, Sam. Indeed it would. What about that? <laughs> My goodness. Well, Martin and Glenise, I, I mean, do you like a tipple now and again? <laughs> you do. Well, I, I, I tell you, you'll be very pleased that you have rejected that prize, but uh, they don't get paid for tonight's show, but that will all be going by, you know, charity to the Don Lusher. <laughs> a marvellous prize, that. It's been rejected. What a prize. It's gone. This is the oh. prize you're having tonight. Yes, what can it be? We know what you hope. What do you think it is? We hope that it's a cruise. Do you? Have you ever been on one? No, never. Oh, really? OK, well, this came in item number three from Linda of Stutz Bear Cats, chess piece. She said, if you join this queen, it will take you days before you reach the final phase. OK? If you join this queen, it'll take you days. Could start you thinking about almost anything, but this all rests with the clue object, a chess piece. Not any chess piece, it's a queen, of course, which leads to before you both reach the final phase. And the queenly queue, you're going to be joined. You're right, it's the QE2 to New York. Yes, indeed, a triple a lifetime. Five days and nights aboard the famous QE2. Destination, the Big Apple, New York. Once there, you get three nights to see the places you've always read about. The fabulous stores on Fifth Avenue, 
the towering buildings, Broadway, the Empire State Building, and the Brooklyn Bridge. Then it's back home by air to talk about the place they say is a wonderful town. A wonderful break it would be too. And a wonderful break it's going to be for Martin Anglonese. You're thrilled? Come on, let's go and get your tickets, come on. <laughs> There you are, Martin. There's your tickets. Marvellous. You've been a great couple tonight. And, of course, there is also the money you won in the quiz. Madeline Bell. How much do I have, Madeline? £350. £350. Marvellous. Eight and easy. God bless you. Martin, keep a hold of that money. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, great contestants. Great acts on our show tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Till we see you next week. Take care. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>your mum if you can stay up late because it's not just your run-of-the-mill TNA it's a TNA explosion on challenge tonight at midnight kaboom